Hello everyone, I'm Marilyn, and at 28 years old, some pretty significant events have shaped my year. The highlight, of course, was my wedding, a joyful celebration that marked a new chapter in my life. However, alongside my marriage, another unexpected event took place. My father-in-law, Bobby, chose this occasion to announce his divorce from his rather difficult wife, Janice. Surprisingly, instead of being upset about the spotlight shifting, my husband and I were quite pleased with Bobby's decision. Let me backtrack a bit and share our story. Samuel, my husband, and I have been acquaintances since middle school, but it wasn't until our senior year in high school that we started dating. Before then, we were best friends, which made transitioning into a romantic relationship feel completely natural. Interestingly, our parents had never met each other before because Samuel and I usually hung out at school or local parks rather than at our homes. About five months into our relationship, Samuel and I decided it was time for our families to meet. My parents were eager to meet him after hearing so much about him. Samuel had warned me about his parents, particularly his mom. He used to joke, what are they, aliens? To which he'd reply, they might as well be. He did assure me that his dad, Bobby, was a wonderful, jovial man who loved a good joke, while his mom, Janice, could be quite challenging. Meeting Samuel's parents turned out to be more intense than I expected. Contrary to Samuel's descriptions, Bobby was reserved and distant, often responding with just a word or two. Janice was even more overwhelming, loud, intrusive, and too keen on meddling in personal matters. Despite the initial challenges, Samuel and I managed to navigate through these complexities, strengthened by our bond and mutual understanding. So when Bobby announced his decision to divorce at our wedding, rather than feeling our day was overshadowed, we felt a sense of relief and a hopeful beginning for Bobby. It was a day of significant endings and exciting new beginnings for all of us. Janice had a way of speaking without any filters, blurting out whatever thoughts crossed her mind. This often left Samuel in the awkward position of having to gently silence her during conversations. During that first meeting, Bobby, his father, would just watch her with a look of deep tiredness, his face telling stories of weariness and frustration. After we left, Samuel was visibly mortified. He kept apologizing for the chaotic encounter and even said he wouldn't blame me if I decided to avoid meeting his parents again. However, I believed in keeping family ties despite their quirks because ultimately, family supports each other. I wasn't about to deprive Samuel of that support. The next day, Samuel called me, his voice filled with a mix of excitement and surprise, to tell me that his dad wanted to meet us at our neighborhood coffee shop. Given Bobby's reserved demeanor the previous day, I was curious to see what he wanted to discuss. At the cafe, Bobby greeted us warmly, a stark contrast to the quiet man I met before. Hey, son. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Dad. Hi, Bobby. Why the sudden secret meeting? Unless, oh God, is mom coming? I joked. No, Bobby chuckled, shaking his head. I wanted to meet you guys here for a reason. I wanted to apologize to Marilyn. Me? But why? I asked, puzzled. Just for how things went yesterday. I know Janice's behavior was unacceptable and my silence wasn't helpful either. I should have intervened, but I was just overwhelmed by it all, Bobby explained, his voice tinged with regret. It's okay, Bobby. There's nothing for you to apologize for. You did your best, and that's all we can ask for. I reassured him. Son, you picked a good one. I like her. Bobby smiled at Samuel, then turned to me. So, how long have you two known each other? Since we were in ninth grade, Samuel replied. Seriously? And how come we've never heard of this beautiful and amazing woman before? Bobby asked, half-joking. You saw why last night, Dad? Samuel said with a wry smile. After our conversation, we spent some more time together. Bobby did turn out to be much like the person Samuel had described initially, just very tired. I genuinely wish the best for him. He deserved happiness, far away from the strife Janice brought into his life. Though I never voiced these thoughts to Samuel or Bobby directly, I hope they both felt the same for their peace of mind.
In our second year together, Samuel and I moved out of our dorms and decided to live together. Sharing a space with Samuel was like living with my best friend, probably because he was my best friend first. It was an incredible experience, and our relationship only grew stronger from there. As our college days unfolded, Bobby started arranging little secret gatherings for us. Initially, I felt a bit apprehensive about these meetups, but as I spent more time with him, my comfort grew. It wasn't long before I could easily joke around with him without any hesitation. Bobby was truly proving to be a wonderful person in our lives. After graduation, Samuel and I decided to wait a couple of years to achieve financial stability and adjust fully to adult life. Once we felt secure, Samuel proposed, and of course, I was ecstatic. We stayed engaged for a year, navigating the challenges of wedding planning, work, and budgeting. Throughout this time, Bobby was incredibly supportive. He wisely kept our plans hidden from Janice to avoid any potential interference, as none of us wanted her meddling in our special day. When the invitations were finally sent, Janice was initially furious, claiming she could help with the planning. However, after we explained it was to be a modest event, she reluctantly dropped the issue. Then came the big day of the wedding. The ceremony was like something out of a dream, with me walking down the aisle and joining Samuel, who couldn't hold back his tears. I found myself crying too, moved by the moment and the vows we exchanged. The guests were all touched, their cheers filling the air as we were pronounced husband and wife. Janice, however, seemed out of sync with the joyous occasion, expressing her displeasure through eye rolls, loud sighs, and even a snicker during my vows. Samuel and I chose to ignore her antics, focusing on the happiness of our day. At the reception, everyone looked stunning, and the atmosphere was vibrant with congratulations and praises for us. We started the evening with our first dance, followed by rounds of drinks, creating a festive mood. Everyone was enjoying themselves except for Janice, who isolated herself in a corner. Despite Bobby's attempts to encourage her to dance, she firmly refused. As the evening progressed, it was time for the toasts. All the guests settled at their tables, and Samuel stood up to raise the first toast to our future together. Everyone listened intently, reflecting the love and support that filled the room, making it a night to remember, undiminished by any sourness from the fringes. After Samuel's heartfelt toast, it was my turn to speak. We were both visibly moved, our eyes misty with tears, which only multiplied as our maid of honor and best man shared their speeches. The room was filled with laughter and cheerful tears, a perfect blend of emotions making the day unforgettable. However, as the time for Janice to give her toast approached, my heart started to race. Given her past attempts to undermine our wedding, it was a relief that we had preemptively arranged for security to keep a discreet eye on her. As Janice stood up to speak, Samuel and I instinctively held each other's hands tightly. Despite our nerves, we hoped for the best. After all, this was an important day for her, too, and deep down, I knew she wouldn't want to miss her son's wedding or mar it too badly. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. For those who don't know, I'm Samuel's mother, Janice began, her voice carrying through the room. It's truly a pleasure to attend my baby's wedding. However, if Marilyn had let me help plan, I would have invited more people. But it's their big day, so I'll let it be. She paused, her next words hanging in the air. I'm happy my son is happy. I just wish he'd found someone a bit more. Appealing. No need for gasps. I'm sure it crossed your minds but here's to us welcoming, well, not the fairest into our family. There was an uncomfortable silence, then murmurs. Before anyone could react further, the microphone was taken from her. Standing there, I felt a mixture of shock and relief as Bobby stepped up, his voice calm but firm. No, Janice, that's not appropriate, he interjected smoothly, but let's focus on the positive here. Samuel and Marilyn, I am truly happy for you both. Marilyn, you are an incredibly strong and brilliant woman. You've handled everything with such grace. It's admirable. I'm also overjoyed to see my son so happy. It's been a long time since I've seen him this joyful. 
Bobby continued, Today is about celebrating love and family, and I'm glad we can all be here to do just that. I know not everyone may see it the same way, but today, we welcome a beautiful new member into our family, both inside and out. His words help to soften the tension, redirecting the focus back to the joy of the occasion. His intervention was a reminder of the resilience and love that had defined our relationship in this special day. As the wedding reception continued, the atmosphere shifted dramatically when Bobby stood up, his voice firm as he addressed the crowd. I know we're here to let go of the past and embrace the future. In that spirit, he said, holding up a stack of papers, here are divorce papers for Janice. The room fell silent for a moment before he continued. I'm done tolerating how you've treated Marilyn. I don't want to deal with this anymore. And I believe Samuel and Marilyn and probably everyone here would agree it's time for a change. The crowd, sensing the gravity and also the relief in his statement, erupted in cheers. Janice, stunned and on the verge of tears, made a move to grab Bobby's arm, possibly to confront him. But Bobby skillfully sidestepped her advance and walked back to his seat. Samuel and I were floored. I can't think of a better word to describe our reaction. I was deeply hurt by Janice's earlier comments and had already signaled to security to intervene, but Bobby's bold move left us both stunned and, in a complex way, relieved. Janice, now clearly losing her composure, began to scream about how I had manipulated everyone's perception of her. She even climbed onto a table, shouting about how everyone would regret their decisions. This spectacle was too much, and Samuel quickly signaled for security to intervene. Janice didn't go quietly, resisting as she was escorted out, her protests becoming louder and more frantic with each step she was taken away. Some guests even began recording the scene, a mix of amusement and shock in the air. After Janice was removed, the atmosphere at the wedding transformed. Samuel and I hadn't realized how much tension her presence had been causing until she was gone. Suddenly, everything felt lighter and we could truly enjoy our celebration. Later, I approached Bobby to check on him, concerned about the dramatic turn of events he had initiated. His response was a heartfelt, yes, I'm doing great. It was clear from his smile and the newfound lightness in his demeanor that he felt liberated. The rest of the wedding proceeded beautifully without any further disturbances. It was a night of celebration, of letting go of the past and welcoming a happier future together. After the whirlwind of our wedding day, Bobby Samuel and I returned to our home completely drained from the events that had unfolded. Given the circumstances, we invited Bobby to stay with us for the night, knowing he wouldn't want to return to a house he shared with Janice. The next morning, we gathered in the kitchen over freshly brewed coffee. Good morning, Bobby. Did you sleep well? I asked as Samuel and I joined him at the table. Ah, here come the newlyweds. Yes, I slept quite well. What about you guys? Bobby replied with a warm smile. We slept so deeply we don't even remember falling asleep, Samuel joked, causing a chuckle around the table. That's good, but I do have something I need to ask you to, Bobby said, his tone turning a bit serious. I was up for a while last night thinking, I'm not sure if I overstepped yesterday causing that scene at your wedding. I'm sorry if I did. Oh no, Bobby, it's all okay. Honestly, I was relieved that you stood up for me, I assured him, placing a comforting hand on his arm. Yeah, and we don't mind the scene, especially when it helped remove the most toxic presence in our lives, Samuel added, his voice firm. I'm glad you feel that way. I was just so tired, you know. I've been covering for her for so long, dealing with her nonsense even longer, Bobby admitted, his gaze drifting off slightly. Why did you stay with her for so long, Dad? Samuel asked, concern etching his features. If I'm being honest, I was ready to leave, but then she got pregnant. I couldn't bear the thought of you growing up without a father, and I always wanted a child. I did my best to shield you from your mother's antics and ideologies. I thought if I could stick it out this long, I could keep going. I got used to her, and change seemed terrifying. 
But when you and Marilyn got together, her behavior worsened, and that's when I knew I couldn't continue, Bobby explained, a mix of relief and sadness in his voice. You have nothing to apologize for, Dad. You've done your best all my life, sacrificing so much for me. The least I could do was support you in letting go of your biggest burden on a day when I was starting a new chapter of my own. Samuel responded, his voice thick with emotion. As the conversation continued, I found myself tearing up. Bobby was truly the kindest man, enduring so much for the sake of his family. It was a poignant reminder of how deeply habitual toxicity can become normalized, making even the thought of change seem daunting. From the depths of my heart, I was genuinely happy for Bobby, witnessing a moment of pure emotional connection as he and Samuel shared a heartfelt hug. Energized by the positive changes, the three of us decided to dress up and go out for breakfast. Over morning coffee and waffles, I finally got to see the cheerful, optimistic man Samuel had always talked about. It was a revelatory experience to witness just how much of Bobby's spirit had been dampened by Janice's influence. Our return home was filled with laughter and lighthearted banter, but this cheerful atmosphere was abruptly cut short. As we pulled into the driveway, we saw Janice waiting at our doorstep, her expression furious. The sight of her instantly dampened our spirits. Despite our relief at her impending absence from our lives, none of us were prepared to face her again so soon. Reluctantly, we invited her in, hoping to resolve whatever issue she had brought to our doorstep. Before any of us could speak, Janice, glaring intensely, pointed a finger at me. You, you are the reason my family is falling apart. You've been nothing but a thorn in my side. It wasn't enough to take one man from my life. You had to influence both. Mom, do you realize how insane you sound? Samuel interjected, his voice firm. Look at what your behavior has driven Dad to. If you're here to yell and blame Marilyn, clearly you haven't learned anything from yesterday. Janice's anger did not wane. I didn't come here just to confront Marilyn. I came to talk to you too. What did you think you were going to achieve by pulling a stunt like that at the wedding? You call me ugly and throw what? Fake divorce papers? Bobby, who had been silent, finally spoke up. Janice, that was no stunt. Those papers were real. I am asking for a divorce because I'm exhausted by your behavior and I meant every word I said yesterday. You're divorcing me because I'm ugly? You spent years pining after me. You know I'm not ugly. Besides, if Samuel can stay with Marilyn, surely you can overlook my appearance. Do you hear yourself? You might not be ugly on the outside, but your personality is another story. You are mean, entitled, and frankly, it's embarrassing to be associated with you. The conversation was tense, with each word revealing the deep cracks in their relationship. It was clear that Bobby's decision, though painful, was aimed at finding peace after years of discord. I'm glad I was once drawn to you because it gave me Samuel, but I do regret staying with you after he moved out, Bobby confessed, his voice tinged with a mixture of relief and regret. You can't be serious right now. Please don't leave me, Janice pleaded, her desperation clear. I tried my hardest to cope with everything, I was prepared to endure this for the rest of my life, but seeing how happy Samuel and Marilyn were made me realize I was sacrificing my happiness for nothing. Your harsh words towards Marilyn only confirmed my decision. Bobby continued, I wanted to wait until we got back home, but I just couldn't. Mom, none of us want this toxicity around. Could you please leave? Janice, now visibly shaken and angry, retorted, I will make your life hell, Marilyn. Believe me, this is all your fault, and I will make you pay for it. That's enough, Bobby said firmly. I'll come pick up some of my things tomorrow, but after that, I expect you to only contact me through my lawyer. Goodbye. With that, Janice left, and despite the tension, the departure was relatively calm. I was disturbed by her audacity to come to our home just to hurl accusations, especially when I had done nothing to provoke her. After she left, Bobby, Samuel, and I decided we needed to relax 
and not dwell on the negativity. We opted to watch a TV series enjoying the lighthearted laughter and the comfort of each other's company. Later that night, Bobby cautiously asked if we felt he had overstepped by assuming he could stay with us until his divorce was finalized. We quickly reassured him that he was welcome and that we were with him every step of the way. It was refreshing to affirm our support, especially after all the drama. In the following weeks, we accompanied Bobby to the courthouse several times. Janice attempted to claim a significant portion of Bobby's assets, but their prenuptial agreement made her efforts futile. It was a trying time, but having each other's support made it more bearable. I was truly grateful to have such a steadfast and kind man like Bobby in my life, and I felt lucky that amidst the chaos, we could all lean on each other. After the divorce was finalized, Janice's behavior didn't improve. It escalated. She began showing up at our house to harass us, which left us no choice but to involve the police. Based on their advice, we secured a restraining order against her. It was disheartening to witness Janice's downfall, but it seemed like a natural consequence of her actions, karma, as some might say. Currently, Bobby is in the process of moving back into his house which Janice has vacated, taking her belongings to an unknown destination. Samuel and I have been helping Bobby move back and settle into his familiar space. Surprisingly, Samuel has handled his parents' divorce better than most might expect. His mother's behavior towards me only deepened his aversion to her, while his father's courageous stand on my behalf has only strengthened their bond. Now, as we all move forward, it's clear that we're all in a better place. This ordeal has taught me a powerful lesson about the impact that others can have on our mental well-being. It's crucial to surround yourself with people who care about you and uplift you, a lesson I hold close as we rebuild our lives together, filled with support and love for one another.